hello friends welcome to this next video on complex analysis in this video okay let us re let us revise what we have done till now we have defined a function from complex plane to complex plane we have discussed about the limits of this function we have discussed about the continuity of this function okay and then after that we discussed about the differentiability of the function right and then we have a concept which was not there in case of real functions that is analyticity right Analy analyticity is the generalization of differentiability and we have seen that uh, checking whether a function complex valued function of a complex variable is differentiable at a point z not is not as easy as in case of real analysis where we can check just the left hand limit and the right hand limit okay to see whether they are equal and they are existing if so they the function is differentiable but that is the that is not the case in case of uh, functions from c to c therefore we have something called cr equations right but then we have seen that cr equations are only necessary conditions and not sufficient okay so when then we imposed after that after c, uh, uh, cr conditions we imposed the continuity of the partial derivatives continuity of u and v for the sufficient uh, for making the cr condition sufficient making the cr conditions sufficient so this is what we have done till now right so we are almost ready with you know the basic things which are required that is limit continuity differentiability and one more thing analyticity and we have seen that analyticity is nothing but if we say that a point at a point z not a function is uh, analytic if there exists an open neighborhood of that point in which uh, the function is differentiable everywhere right this is the analyticity of the function right now before uh, trying some applications of what we have done we will prove the last important result right we we know that okay we will prove the last important results we have this result in case of functions of real variables f of x is equal to 0 implies f dash x is equal to 0 implies f of x is equal to constant right so the, uh, we have a similar kind of result here so let us write that result i'll just write it down then i'll prove it theorem the proof is very simple okay if f if fz is analytic in a domain d now see what is this domain domain we have studied it separately these are open connected sets okay that we have done in the initial videos so it is important so if f that is analytic in a domain d and if f dash that is equal to 0 and if f dash that is equal to 0 at every point in d everywhere in d then f of z is constant in d this is what we have to prove okay so the the thing which you should note that this domain is important if you have for example i give you an example of a function f of z is equal to 0 if mod of z is less than 1 and this is 1 if mod of z is greater than 2 so you can see clearly see that f dash z is equal to 0 everywhere in the domain of the definition that is domain of the definition but what is how the domain of the function looks this is mod z less than 1 and this is mod z greater than 2 so this is where the function is defined and in this region because this region is not connected so this is not a domain in the sense of domain which is open connected set so you can see that in this case also f dash z is equal to 0 but f z is not con uh, constant you can note that here f, f dash z is equal to 0 but f of z is not constant right the reason is the reason is that the domain of definition domain of definition is not open connected okay and we call the open connected subsets of c as domains right that is uh, just a terminology right so you you should note that this thing is very important so this result is valid only the domain of definition is a domain is a domain means is an open connected set right 
so let us prove it it the proof is very simple we have that f dash that is equal to zero in d where d is an open connected set right and we have just seen in the last video that f dash that is nothing but ux plus ieta vx is equal to zero in d right it implies ux is equal to zero and vx is equal to zero in d right now i have proved in some earlier video the following theorem i'll use that theorem theorem which we have already proved where i defined the domain there i have proved this theorem the theorem says that suppose uxy is a real valued function defined in an open connected domain d is a real valued function defined in an open connected domain d if the first partial derivatives of u satisfy if u of x is equal to 0 and v of x is equal to 0 then u sorry u of x is equal to 0 and u y is equal to 0 then u is equal to constant okay you can go through the proof again and there also you will come to know that here the connectedness is required open connectedness connectedness is required so now here we have we will use the this theorem so ux is equal to 0 vx is equal to 0 now because function is analytics therefore we can use cr equations ux is equal to 0 means vy is equal to 0 and vx is equal to 0 means uy is equal to 0 therefore we have ux is equal to uy is equal to 0 and vx is equal to vy is equal to 0 in d which is an open connected set therefore this theorem will come into picture this will imply that u is equal to constant and v is equal to constant therefore it implies that f of z which is actually u plus ieta v is a constant so you can see that the connectedness is very much important right for whatever we are doing so this connectedness is required actually right so without the connectedness we cannot use this result and we have this as a counter example this is the counter example here we have this counter example here the function is such that f dash that is equal to 0 but the function is not constant because the domain of definition is not open connected it is open but not connected right so let us just uh, do one or two you know applications of this result so first thing is some applications of above results are important and you can use them the first thing is that if f and g are two analytic functions f and g are two analytic functions in a domain d domain means open connected in a domain d whose derivatives are identical whose derivatives are identical that is f dash g is equal to g dash it implies f is equal to g plus a constant so this is the proof is simple f dash is equal to g dash implies f minus g dash is equal to 0 it implies f minus g is equal to constant because we are in a domain it implies f is equal to g plus a constant right let us do one more result so this is simple right one more result second result is if you have real of f of z is equal to constant and f is analytic in a domain d both things in a domain d they imply that f is constant right so you have real of f of z is equal to constant implies u is equal to constant it implies ux is equal to uy is equal to constant zero sorry constant means zero because we are in a domain so it implies 
because function is analytic so we can use the cauchy riemann equation vx is equal to vy is equal to 0 and because we are in a domain uh, not this because we are in a domain it implies that v is equal to constant so you have u constant v constant therefore it implies u plus eta v which is nothing but f of z is constant right so if you are given that only the real part is constant and f is analytic and you are in a domain then automatically the imaginary part will be constant similarly we have this result if imaginary of f of z is equal to zero uh, constant and f is analytic and you are in a domain d domain means open connected and it implies that f is constant so you can see the beauty right if you are given only that the imaginary part is constant and function is analytic and we are inside the domain then automatically f will be constant the proof is similar to the last proof you can do it I will write down one more result. The last result is if modulus of f of z is constant and f is analytic in a domain D, it implies that f is constant in D. Right? Let us prove it. We will just make two cases. Uh, I am given that modulus of f of z is equal to constant. So modulus means u square plus v square square root is constant. It implies u square plus v square is equal to constant. I will make the two cases. One is u square plus v square is non-zero and the other is u square plus v square is equal to zero. Now when u square and v square plus v square is zero and u and v are real, therefore it, it is possible only when u is equal to 0 and v is equal to 0 it implies f of z is equal to 0 which is automatically a constant so in this case we are done we don't have to prove anything now let us see this thing so you are given that u square plus v square is not equal to 0 and u square v square is actually some constant some non-zero constant so i can differentiate it with respect to x differentiate with respect to x you will get 2u ux plus 2v vx is equal to 0. It implies u ux plus v vx is equal to 0. Similarly, differentiate with respect to y, you will get v v, uh, sorry, u u y plus v v y is equal to 0. Now, we can use the, because the function is given to be analytic, so we can use the CR equations and we can convert everything into ux and uy so I can use the CR conditions I'll write u ux plus instead of vx I'll write minus uy so it will be minus minus v uy is equal to 0 and in the second equation I'll have u uy I'll write it here and v vy will be v u x is equal to 0 right so I have a system of equations in two variables u x and u y so this is a homogeneous system of equations and since u square plus v square is not equal to 0 which is a determinant of the matrix so I have u x is equal to 0 and u y is equal to 0 which implies v x is equal to 0 and v y is equal to 0 again using the CR conditions now because we are in a domain D it implies u is equal to constant and it implies v is equal to constant right so therefore we have f of z is equal to u plus i of v a constant right so this is what we have to do in this video so we are done with this video in the next video we will look at the very important topic that is harmonic functions okay that is an application of analytic functions and these harmonic functions are useful in mathematical physics they are actually very useful functions you see these functions everywhere in fluid mechanics in electromagnetic and so many things okay thank you